Hi, I'm Rick, and today we're going to talk about an advanced RTAG feature called indirect tagging or also shared tags. Indirect tagging provides a lot of benefits in developing a larger HMI that uses multiple screens. For example, faster HMI development, lower maintenance on the HMI if you need to add more buildings or more devices, lower network bandwidth, and also better HMI performance. So to talk about exactly what shared tags is, why don't we just look at a project real quick here. So I have here an HMI project that has multiple buildings, and this is an overview map. If you click on each one of these boxes here, it brings you to the details of that building. The building has a 734 or a 735 meter in there from SEL. So I'll just click on that, and you can see here the building information. Now each one of these things, like the instantaneous current, it's directly mapped to a tag from that meter that is collected from the RTAC. Each one of these boxes up here provides a link to the next building or to another building. So you have to have, as you can see all these tabs up here, you have to have a screen for every building or every device in the system. But as you can also see as I scroll through these buildings that the screens look pretty much the same. So in indirect tagging or we'll call it shared tags, you can see we have a similar screen here. This is an overview screen. Um, instead of clicking on the actual building name, I'm going to click on select to select that building. And then if you look at the tabs here, we only have one screen. And there's just one, that's it, um, for all of those buildings. And if you look at the values for instantaneous current now, it's, it's a tag called indirect tagging instantaneous A. And all of them are that way, they're all indirect tags. So how does that work in the RTAC? So the first thing we do is, in the RTAC project, is we create a virtual tag list and we put all of the tags that are related to, um, to that kind of device. So for example, here's my, here's my tag list. And I've got some, I have some controls that we're going to talk about in just a minute. But here's all of the, um, the current voltages and everything for that kind of device. And there's some other programs and things going on inside this, this project that normalize it for different devices, but we won't talk about those right now. Um, here are all the devices that are being pulled, 734, 735s, different devices. Um, all of that data goes then into the RTAC. Now how do we get that data to go to the HMI? So that's a good question. So we look at this one program called Building Selection. and we see that there's a rising edge trigger function block that looks at a certain status value. Then we go back to the HMI, and we see that when you click on the select for a building, that is a control point going to the RTAC. So here's indirect tagging, building three, or building two, or building 10, or whichever one it is. Then you go back to that one program. The rising edge trigger is detected for, say, for example, we select building one. The code in the, that project then sets a latch for building one to true and the rest of them for, to false. And then if it's building two, it sets that one to true and the rest of them to false. Now, so where does that come into play? If we look at the tag processor, then this is going to make a lot of sense. So I look at that latch bit. If building one is true, then I'm going to set all of the tags for building one from that particular relay or meter or whatever device it is to those indirect tags that I've created. If I select building two, scroll down here a little bit, then you'll see it does exactly the same thing, uses the same indirect tags, but uses the specific tags for that device. And something kind of cool that you can do, you can see that I have a heading here that's a string type, and I call it building two for building two. Go back to the HMI, and you'll notice that there is no heading on this page, but there is a tag, and the tag is blank and it's the indirect tagging page heading so that I can make that page heading anything I want on the fly. And that gives me one page I can use for everything. Now there are a couple points that were brought in from other devices like gas values and stuff like that that we don't have on the main screen of the other devices. So to accomplish that all I did was make a blue box right here that covers up those parts. And you can see the, the stuff is underneath there. And then if building 10 is not true, then make this visible. So in other words, blank out the stuff that only applies to building 10. 
And in that way, you can make the screen very customizable. You can even make different devices appear or not appear, depending on which device you've selected. Shared tags provides a great efficiency. So, for example, in direct tagging or shared tags, we have 19 total diagrams that you have to build with over 3,000 tags that are going to be coming from the RTAC to the computer. So it's a big burden on the network, it's a burden on your computer, and it's a burden on the RTAC. With indirect tags or shared tags, there's three total diagrams and 165 tags total. So if you have to change the diagram or you add more devices, then you only have to change that one screen. You don't have to add any more screens. And that's pretty much it. And as you can see, the shared tags provides a great efficiency boost for your HMI development and maintenance. And if you have any further questions, you can feel free to contact us here at SEL. Thanks.